everyone, I'm Carrie Doherty. And I'm Tim Cash. And today on the show, counterpart executive producer Jordan Horowitz relives his moment in Oscar history. This is not a joke. And the Sundance Film Festival begins this weekend. And we're both going for the very first time. Luckily, we'll be joining IMDb's resident Sundance expert, Kevin Smith, who's going to show us the ropes. We challenge Kevin to tell us his top three Sundance films in just 30 seconds each. And for Kevin, that's quite a challenge. This is the IMDb Show. It's me, Kevin Smith, and guess what? I'm going to be up at the IMDb studio at the 2018 Sundance Film Festival this year. Now, it's real cold in Park City where they hold the festival, but just to warm you up for the fest itself, I'm going to hit you with my three all-time favorite Sundance Film Festival titles, starting with number three, Brigsby Bear, man, from last year, 2017. This is one of the most special films I've ever seen in my life. It's a film that celebrates not just filmmaking, which it does, but creativity. It's about how creativity is incredibly therapeutic. It's got an amazing cast with Kyle Mooney in it, Greg Kinnear, and Mark Hamill. Luke Skywalker himself is in the flick. I promise you, you've never seen anything like this. It will open up your head and heart. It was one of the most inspiring movies I've seen in the last 10 years. Came out of Sundance last year. It's okay to question the world around you, but you probably won't find the answers you're looking for. Bye! Numero uno deuce. House Party. You didn't see that coming, did you? Reginald Hudlin's film, Hudlin Brothers, man. They make a movie about their corner of the world. It's about a night where kid and play go to a party at a house and stuff. Very simple plot, one of the most enjoyable movies of all time to ever come out of that festival. The music is popping. Uh, it's, a, it's a real snapshot of where everyone lives in that world. It inspired me to make my movie Clerks. I was like, oh my lord, I want to do my version of House Party, but with no music, no fun whatsoever. Black and white. <laughs> And my number one all-time favorite Sundance film, Slacker. Directed by Richard Linklater, came out in 1991. This is the movie that made me want to be a filmmaker. I saw Richard Linklater, Slacker, and it was a snapshot of a corner of his world in Austin, Texas. Had no main characters, no three-act structure. You just followed a character to another character, then to another character, then to another character. Slacker is hands down the biggest Sundance movie ever had an impact on me, will always be my favorite. I may live badly, but at least I don't have to work to do it. If you can't make it to the festival, don't worry, I got you covered. I'm gonna be the IMDb studio, so tune in. Our guest today is a producer known for the award-winning La La Land, The Kids Are Alright, and is the executive producer of Star's new series, Counterpart, Jordan Horowitz. Jordan, welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, your face looks very familiar to our audience. I think we know why, probably because of this. There's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. It's from Oscars last year. It is, it is. So I went to the mic and I said, you know, Moonlight won. And I could tell, like, you, you could see in the audience, Nobody believed what was happening. And so then I see Warren out of the, the corner of my eye holding the envelope and I took it and I held it up thinking, I hope this cameraman knows what to do. And he nailed it. Moonlight, best picture. It's funny when you steal the card from Warren Beatty. It's funny, I called him the next morning just to kind of talk about what had happened. I was like, you know, I, I, I didn't mean to like, and he was like, no, no, you did exactly what I would have done. And I was like, thanks, I appreciate that. And one year later, the Oscars are here. Yeah. You're part of the voting academy. I am, I am part of the academy uh, so now. So I gotta ask you, yeah. who are you gonna put your money on for best picture this year? If I had to pick one right now, yep. I'd say Get Out. So, is it true? Is it better? Wow, wow. But we'll see what happens. Something else that has a ton of momentum at the moment is your new show on Stars. Oh yeah. Counterpart. Someone's walked in from the other side. The other side, I... Whatever you do, don't panic. What is Counterpart about? You know, it's a very character forward, Cold War espionage show with like a sprinkling of sci-fi over the top. And not only do you have one J.K. Simmons yes. in this show, you have two. We have two J.K. Simmons. Hi, Howard. J.K. Simmons is just a tremendous actor. Sensational. Because character. he plays two versions two of versions the same of himself. man. What's so awesome about the, his performance, and it's something that we talked a lot about in development, was like, because there are sort of two duplicate worlds, and everybody has two characters, and everybody sort of looks the same on, on either world, how would you know where you are? And really, it's through J.K. You always know if he's Howard Alpha or Howard Prime. They're gonna see through me. And if you keep your mouth shut. It's in the way he carries himself, it's in its face, and that's just an absolute testament to his performance. Very quickly, outside of JK, sci-fi fans are gonna love this because of the details. Yeah, for sure. How have you detailed two separate worlds? You know, a, a very small example in the first episode is, you know, right in the teaser, like you see somebody on a cell phone that's clearly not 
a right. cell phone from our world. You know, tech has developed differently. One world is a bit colder and more sterile. One world is a bit warmer. When we shot in Berlin and LA, and we used sort of like the old European uh, part of Berlin for one world. And then the other side was like the sort of newer, more modern part of Berlin. It just, you know, aesthetically, it just, it, it is very clear. The last thing you want is me with nothing left to say. With so many shows out there, what makes this a game changer for people to watch? I think that the focus on character and like the themes of sort of who might you have been had you made some different choices, just the whole nature versus nurture vibe of the show. We share genetics, childhood. I want to know how you became so different. Well, Lies. you got four keywords. You've got espionage, thriller, action, and JK. And sci-fi. Okay, here on the IMDb show, it's tradition. To get a little bit of trivia, so let's get some trivia on Counterpart for your page. All right, so um, Justin Marks yes. and I, Justin's the creator and showrunner of Counterpart. We went to high school together. We were in a band called The Side Project. What kind of band was this? It was 1997. Okay. So it was kind of progressive rock in the vein of like, you know, Dave Matthews a little bit. Well, I guess music's loss is film's gain. Yes, that's right, that's right. All right, you're from New York originally, but you made a quintessential Los Angeles movie with La La Land. I did. So I'm gonna get you to pick between New York and LA movies. Ready? Yeah. Breakfast at Tiffany's or Pretty Woman? Breakfast at Tiffany's. Why? Audrey Hepburn. First Die Hard or Die Hard with Vengeance? First Die Hard. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Do the Right Thing or Boys in the Hood? Do the Right Thing. That movie's a masterpiece. Final one. Escape from New York or Blade Runner? Blade Runner. You split LA and New York. Yeah. Can I just decide LA? <laughs> Is that fine? Fine, but you have to pick one LA movie that tops any New York movie ever made. Chinatown's definitely one of them. <laughs> Chinatown or La La Land? I mean, come on. No? I, I can't pick La La Land ever. I made, I made right. La La Land, so I can't ever choose it. Amazing. Yeah. Well, stay right there. In tribute to Counterpart, we took to the street to ask people who their famous counterpart is. My celebrity doppelganger is Tom Hanks. Kanye West. A Cesar Romero. Topher Grace. Hilary Duff. Ryan Seacrest. I am a better looking version of Jake Gyllenhaal. Bruce Willis. Willow Smith. Bradley Cooper. So do you guys have any uh, famous doppelgangers? When I was younger, I used to get um, the Karate Kid. And... Ralph Macchio. You know, I have to think from here down. I get Chris Abbott, that guy on Girls. Yes. Girls, yeah. I used to get Marlon Brando, though I'm like, I'm even embarrassed to say that because- No, hold on, I see it. Every now and then I get Bernadette from The Big Bang Theory. Oh, also I get that people tell me I look like my mother who looks like Bette Midler, so I guess I also look like Bette Midler. Midler. I get that too. So if you watch the show, you might notice that at the end of every episode, we like to go over what's on our watch list. Counterpart is on our watch list of sci-fi thrillers. What other sci-fi thrillers do you guys think people should put on their watch list? Um, Alien. No, get It's a masterpiece. Just from the moment that entire movie opens up. Oh yeah. You feel eerily creeped and out and thrilled. And the restraint of that movie yes. and the character work. We'll proceed with Dallas's plan. <gasps> what? Tim, what about you? I'm kind of wake, working my way through Black Mirror. Oh, it really does work. Sure? <laughs> I just watched USS Callister. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's pretty incredible. Yeah. I really loved it. Three cheers for Captain Daly. Hip hip hooray! Black Mirror is on my list for TV, and then in terms of movies, Ex Machina. You shouldn't trust Nathan. You shouldn't trust anything he says. That ending, woo! Is it strange to have made something that hates you? I just thought of a good one, Inception. We bring the subject into that dream, and they fill it with their subconscious. Yeah, for, for me, sure. as a sci-fi thriller, That's a, Inception, totally sci -fi thriller. as a modern day one, for some people, Sci-fi is just not their thing. Yeah. Inception is a movie that gets everybody. For sure. Mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. So we've talked about so many things today that we're adding to our watch list. And if you want to keep track of it all, you can add it to your watch list using the IMDb app. Click the plus sign or the add to watch list button on any title and boom, it's added to your watch list. Then the next time you're not sure what to watch, it'll all be there waiting for you on your watch list.
Jordan, thank you so much for being here on the IMDb show. Thank you for having me. If you want to watch Counterpart, you can find it Sunday nights on Stars at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. And don't forget, we're going to be with Kevin Smith covering the best new films coming out of the Sundance Film Festival all weekend long. And we'll see you next Thursday. But before we go, with so many trailers coming out each week, we want to help you stay on top of it all. So here are the best moments from this week's trailer drops. Three, two... You waited for me to get back here for that, didn't you? <laughs> he farted. That wasn't a fart! <laughs> that was just air leaving my butt! Which is a fart. Stop. I mean, I'm not kidding. You're making me nauseous. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, okay? Your secret's safe with me. Would you like Exanix, Ambien, Valium, Oxy? I've got heavier stuff if you want. Why don't we take the drug, Molly? Is that the one to make you eat people's faces up? Where are you guys going? To go buy some crack? You wanna throw it down? It's okay. They're not buying drugs, Bob. Just let them No, I get the joke.